call on the name of Jesus. The Lord has this wonderful way yes, of making yes. things all right. When I call on the name of Jesus, I begin to feel just a little bit better. The burdens become a little bit lighter. The stress has to fall off. When I call on the name of Jesus, somebody call on that great name. Clap your hands and praise him. Clap your hands and praise him. How many know he's an awesome God? He's a mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the everlasting Father. His name is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and are saved. Glory be to God. We praise him. We honor him. We give him glory. Because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We give praise and honor to him. Amen. Because he is worthy. Woke me up this morning. Closed me in my right mind. Heart beating right on time. Oh, I'm glad. Gave me a mind to come to his house to praise him, to preach his word today, to worship with the saints. Amen. We praise God that you are not just a spectator, but you are a participator. Amen. In this worship experience. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. He is worthy of our praise. We thank him once again because he's worthy. Amen. We give honor. To all of our deacons, trustees, deaconesses, first lady, sister Graham, ministers, wives, husbands, to all of the officers and members of the St. John Baptist Church, the media ministry, the choirs, the ushers, the musicians, the social media uh, friends who are gathering on social media and those who are in the house, amen. I tell you, every Sunday you look better and better, amen? Amen. amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> Folks are coming back, gradually coming back, and we praise God. Saints, uh, this is not only Communion Sunday, but we also call this Stewardship Sunday. You know, we, uh, in the past, we've had a whole month of stewardship, and usually it's usually in January, where we give you a whole month of stewardship uh, messages to remind you of how blessed you are, and to remind you of the call that God has on your life to give as given unto the Lord. Well, because of uh, the 21-day fast and, of course, uh, Black History Month, we, we, we weren't able to give a series of stewardship sermons. But I want to share with you today just to remind you to refresh your mind and your memory of how blessed you are and how God wants to bless you even now. With that said, let's turn to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, and Luke chapter 6. Verse 38, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, that's the Father speaking, and now the Son in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Reading from the King James Version in, in Genesis and the New King James Version in Luke. It says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom, into your lap. Amen. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back 
to you. These words will come my message. I want to use for a theme or a thought these brief moments we have together. There is a blessing in your giving. There is a blessing in your sowing. And of course, the law of sowing and reaping. Yeah. Saints, I have learned the secret to increase. Mm -hmm. It is sowing and reaping. It is the law of seed time and harvest. God the Father establishes this law in the Old Testament. Jesus the Son commands, promotes, and encourages this law, this practice in the New Testament. Don't you hear the Father establishing this law of seed time and harvest in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, saying, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Did you hear what God the Father said? As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. As long as we're living in this world, on this earth, we can count on, we can bank on the law of seed time and harvest. And you know what seed time and harvest means? You will reap what you sow. In other words, you cannot expect, expect the harvest if you do not sow any seeds. You cannot expect increase if you never sow any seeds. God says, this is the secret of your blessings. This is the secret of your increase. Why do you say it's a secret? Because the world, to the world, to the unbeliever, this giving thing, this tithing thing, this offering thing is a mystery. And guess what? Only the children of the kingdom will see and understand the mystery. That's why I said, I have learned the secret to increase. God has revealed this mystery to me, but not to me only, but to every blood-bought, born-again, faith-walking believer. So God says, I want to give you the secret to increase your, in your life. It is the law of seed time and harvest. I know, it's, I know it's right there before you, plain, as plain as day, but you need to see it. You need to believe it. You need to practice it by faith. Somebody say faith. Faith is the key. Faith is the key. That's the Father, that's God the Father, but Jesus Christ, the Son, comes along and he says, you want to know the secret to increase? It's right there before your eyes in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, where he says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your lap, your bosom. For with that same measure you use, it will what? Be measured to you again. Don't you see the law of increase in the words of Jesus? It is called reaping and sowing in agricultural terms. Let me say it again. Jesus said, and I paraphrase, sow and you shall reap a good harvest. Press down, shaken together, overflowing shall men put back in your bosom. For whatever you sow, that's what you will reap. This says to us that God wants to us to reap the benefits of sowing and reaping seed time and harvest. Notice now that this is a command and a promise. You can bank on it because it is a universal law that, that, that the reason why many people are not blessed is because they are not what? Doing like they should. That's what Proverbs 11 verses 24 and 25 means saying, one man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another man withholds unduly and comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper and he who refreshes others will what? Himself be refreshed. What has happened 
among the people of God is that we have allowed money to possess and control us. Rather than what? Possessing and controlling it. And so when we, when you trust God, who owns it all, you can give unto him freely and liberally, knowing that God will be no debtor to any man. No matter how much you give to him, he's going to give you more. Songwriter said it like this, you can't beat God's giving. No matter how you try, the more you try to give, the more he'll give to you. This is what Jesus is trying to get us to see in the text today. In so many words, Jesus is saying, God wants to bless you. God wants to, to be able to respond to your giving in a powerful way. For this word really says that God is giving you an opportunity to be blessed. An overflow. God is giving you an opportunity to experience increase in your life. And the way you do it is sowing and giving and expecting a harvest. How do you receive it? By faith. By being obedient to the master who said, give and it shall be given. In other words, Jesus really saying, practice the law of seed time and harvest. Give and it shall be given given. Can I show you how this law of seed time and harvest really works? There are four principles in this law that we want to share with you today. And the first principle that Jesus wants to share with you is in the law of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, is the principle of investment. Somebody say investment. What does that say? It says you get only if you give. You get only if you give. You reap only if you sow. This is what it says. Listen to it again. Give and it shall be given unto you. This is the command followed by a promise. Jesus says give, sow. That's the command. That's the principle that we've called to practice. But he does not stop with the command. He does not stop with the principle. He follows up with a promise. And the promise says, it shall be given unto you. Did Jesus say, did he say, it might be given unto you? Did Jesus say, cross your fingers now? It may or may not be given unto you. Did he say that? No, he said, it shall be given unto you. This is a promise that you can bank on. This is a promise you can stand on. You can live by this promise. This is a universal principle of the law of investment. It is what Jesus calls reaping and sowing. You get only if you give. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 which says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Simply put, if you don't sow, you don't reap. If you don't give, you don't get. You don't go out and look for a harvest in your garden if you never put any seeds in the ground. No, no. You only get back what you give. Whatever you put in the ground, that's what's going to come out of the ground. During what? Harvest time. You reap only if you sow. But you have so many people crying and complaining, saying, I don't understand why, why God is not blessing me. Why I'm having such a challenge and such a hard time? Why am I not getting a harvest? Well, if you're expecting a harvest and you haven't planted anything, I hate to bust your bubble, but you're not going to get anything. If you, you get only if you give. We need to learn 
and practice this principle of investment. This is what Jesus is trying to encourage us. Saying, give, and it shall be given unto you. You reap only if you sow. Second principle Jesus wants us to see is the principle of identity. Investment identity, which says you get only what you give. Only what you give. We not only get if we give, secondly, we get only what we give. We, get, we reap only what we sow. For instance, the principle works beyond the area of stewardship. Some people would say to me, Lord, oh, well, I don't feel loved. Nobody loves me. Well, if you want to feel loved, you got to give love. Yeah. When you give love, you get love. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I don't feel very joyful. You know, folks who are up in here praising God, you can see the joy on your faces. Amen. Some people say, well, I don't feel joyful. Well, to be joyful, you got to give joy. You know, you got to get up and praise him. And guess what? Joy will come back to you. Whatever it is that you give, what, it what? it's going to come back to you. That's the principle of identity. You, you, you don't put corn in the ground and expect to get wheat. Wheat doesn't come from corn. You get only what you give. You reap only what you sow. That principle applies to the whole area of stewardship too. If you want to be blessed financially, guess what? You have to give of your tithe and your offering. Yes, this is what Jesus is saying in the text. Give and it shall be given to you. And look what it says in that latter clause. For what, you, what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. You get only what you give. This is not some formula that I've made up or created for the church. No, this formula comes from the word of God. You reap only what you sow. Jesus says this to his disciples. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You get only what you give. In other words, God has made every seed to produce after its kind. So if you sow an apple seed, you're only going to get apples. If you plant cotton seeds, you're only going to get cotton. If you plant financial seeds, you're going to expect what? Financial harvest. If I want a, the blessing of God, I have to what? Give up my tithe and sow my offering. I have to sow into the things of God. Paul once wrote, he who sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the spirit, to God, shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. So whatever it is that you sow, that's what you're going to get. Can I get a witness? So there's a principle of investment. You get only if you sow. The principle of identity, you get only what you sow. Guess what? Anger produces anger. Hatred produces hatred. Grace and mercy, love and money produces what? Grace and mercy, love and money. You only get what you give. You only reap what you sow. That's the second principle. But there's a third principle. The principle of increase. Somebody say increase. Which is you get more than what you give. Think about it. If that wasn't true in the agricultural world, there would be no farmers. If every year you go out and you plant one seed, and you only get one seed back, what's the use in going out and planting? 
You just keep the one seed, right? But can I tell you that in the law of seed time and harvest, when you give to God for his purpose, his increase will blow your mind. This is what Jesus is saying in that second clause. In the text saying, give, and it shall be given. Well, how is it going to be given back? Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Shall be poured back into your lap. This shows abundant increase in your life. As a result of what? You giving. As a result of you sowing. This is how you experience supernatural increase in your life. In fact, Jesus says, when you give, the return is incredible. One pastor says, the return is a hundredfold. Look at the image of the corn. I guess you can see it on there, yes. Look at the image of the corn. You plant a couple of seeds, guess what? You get back several ears of corn. You get back more than you give. This also goes for those bad seeds. If you treat people bad, do people wrong, guess what? Sometimes you get back more. So if you want to be blessed abundantly, guess how you ought to sow abundantly. If you're happy with where you are right now, then just keep on doing what you're doing. Why? Because 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. God wants to bless you with more. But you have to do your part. The principle of increase, you get more than what you give. I want you to look down at that second clause in Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Look at the abundance of blessing that keeps piling up on top of each other. Somebody say overflow. The blessings, uh, the blessing increases more and more. Look at it. Give and it shall be given. How? Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Overflow where they put into your lap. Somebody say El Shaddai. That's what the God of of, 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 of the overflow is. He's El Shaddai. And when you start sowing, guess what? El Shaddai is going to give you an abundant blessing. El Shaddai is going to give you an overflow. That's what Jesus said when he came, right? I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Life to the overflow. Life to the increase. Why? Because you get more than what you give. You cannot outgive God. But then there's a fourth principle in the text. And that principle is the principle of interval. Interval. Which means you get later than when you give. Now, this is where we lose a whole lot of folk. Why? Because we live in such an instant. Age, instant gratification, instant results, instant blessings. God doesn't always work instantly. It takes time for the crop to grow. It takes time for the harvest to produce. You don't plant the field with corn today and expect to go up in the morning and it's going to be full of crops. Or the next week, or the next week. No, you got to wait. It takes time. You don't reap the same day you sow. You sow in the spring, and you harvest in the fall. It takes time for the seed to germinate. Put that uh, screen up. It takes time for the seed to germinate, grow into a stem, then into a stock, then into the air, and then the final product, the corn or the harvest. It takes time. Now, there are times, if you look at, I uh, think, Joel, it says uh, the, 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 the harvest, the, the, the reapers are going to overtake the, the sowers. Amen? So there are times where you're going to get some instant, instant, instant increase. 
couple of years ago, my wife and I decided to sow $2,000 into a local ministry for their building project. And before we could get the check in the person's hand, we'd already received, what, $3,500 uh, from two different sources. I mean, that's, that's, the, the, that's, 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 that's instant, immediate increase. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. But you ought to expect it every now and then. Amen? This principle, this is the principle of interval. But if you are persistent, if you are consistent, if you are faithful, if you wait on the Lord, guess what? In due season, you will reap if you faint not. Somebody say due season. Lord, glory be to God. I don't know about you, but I like the due seasons in my life. You know, we got all kind of seasons. I mean, seasons of ups and seasons of downs, seasons of storms, seasons of summer, seasons of winter. But thank God for due season. That's what Paul meant in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, saying, And let us not be weary in well-doing, in sowing financial seed. Why? Because they were doing it for, for his mission and ministry. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season. You shall reap if you do not quit, if you do not give up. Be persistent, be consistent, be faithful. Glory be to God. Be faithful. Won't he show up? And when he shows up, won't he show out? Won't he bless you in due time? Won't he provide for you? When you never, when you least expect it, won't it blow your mind? Well, sometimes when you don't even well, look for it. This principle is true. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men put into your bosom. Glory be to God. But the question is when? When is that going to happen? You got to wait until it comes. You get later than you give. Won't he show up? And when he shows up, won't he show out? The children of Israel were trapped at the Red Sea, but God showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out, and they walked over on dry ground. The Hebrew boys were cast in the fiery furnace, but God showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out. They walked out without a burn on their body. Won't he show up? Won't he show out? Daniel was cast in the lion's den, but God showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out. Daniel walked out of the lion's den without a, without a break on his body. Somebody say yes. Hezekiah was sick unto death, but God showed up. And when he showed up, didn't he show out? He took out his ad machine, added 15 more years to his life. Won't he show up? And won't he show out? Job was sick so long, flesh fell from his bones, and he, he lost everything he had, but God showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out. He gave Job back double for everything he lost. Somebody say he'll show up. Peter, Andrew, and the fishing crew toiled all night long. Caught nothing, but Jesus showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out. He said, now go back and launch your net into the deep one more time. And they, Peter said, man, we done been toiling all night. Nevertheless, since you asked, Lord, since you told us to do it, we're going to do it. And guess what? They pulled up a net breaking boatload of fish and God, because God showed up and showed out in their life. Somebody say yes. When you're faithful, guess what? God will show up. When you're faithful, God's got your back. When you're faithful, he'll come through for you. When you're faithful, he'll show up. And he'll show out. I see about 20 people up in here who know what I'm talking about. 
You've been there. You've done that. Your back was against the wall, but God showed up. And when he showed up, you came walking out with pure gold. You came walking out with boldness. You came walking out with a praise. Say yeah, somebody. All I'm trying to tell you is God wants to bless you. And he's already given us the formula. Give. And it shall be given unto you. And guess what? The giving back to you is in so many forms. So many ways. You didn't show up in the emergency room. You didn't show up at the doctor. Your children are still safe. Your children are still safe from hurt, harm, and danger. You got in that accident, but you walked out. Thank God that God will show up. And when he shows up, he knows how to show out. Say yeah, somebody. Glory be to God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I know the man who knows how to show up and show out. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. You, give, you get only if you give. You get only what you give. Hallelujah. You get only, you get, you get later than you give. And you get more than what you give. God says he's going to bless you. Just trust the process. Believe his word. Obey his word. And see won't God blow your mind. There may be someone out of the ark of safety, no God on your side, no heaven in your view. You're lost today, and you need to know this God who knows how to make, bring increase in your life. You need to know this Jesus who knows how to tell you to launch back out into the deep. We know you failed. We know you, 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 didn't, you didn't succeed the first time, but you need a Jesus who wants to tell you to go back and try it again. All you got to do is come, repent of your sins, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says, no if ands, or buts about it, you shall be saved. And guess what? When you're saved, you're a part of the kingdom. You're citizens of a greater glory. Hallelujah. When you're saved, you get to tap into the increase. But you got to be saved. So there may be one who desire to join this church. This St. John, because we're in love with Jesus. Come under your Christian experience with letter recommendations of the candidate prepared for baptism. Come now while you have a chance. Glory be to God. There may be another... If you step out one of St. John or step out with you, well, hallelujah. Will there be another? Will there be another? As the Spirit of God speaks to your heart, do it now. Hallelujah. 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 She's overjoyed. Her husband has joined the church. Her husband has given her life, his life to Jesus. She's overjoyed. Hallelujah. There's room at the cross for you. Do it now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Do it now while you have a chance. Step out. If you step out, one of St. John. We'll step out with you. Will you come today? He says, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and I'm knocking. If any man will hear my voice, open the door. I'll come in. Have sup with him. He with me, I with thee. Will you come? Give your life, your heart, your soul, your mind to the Lord. Don't let this moment pass you by. Spirit is tugging at your heart. Spirit is tugging at your heart. Step out now. Don't let this moment pass you by. Tomorrow's not promised. Next Sunday's not promised. Do it now. 
join the family of God. Join a church that will love you and nurture you and hold you accountable and hold you up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let this moment pass you by. God loves you. We love you. God wants to bless you. He wants to save you. He wants to set you free. Yes. Hallelujah. On this stands of those of you who desire prayer, will you come that we might pray the prayer of faith together? Go to ask wherever it counts. Be prepared. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? God is able to do exceedingly abundantly over and above all that we could ever ask, think, or even imagine of him. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. While we're coming and while we're humming softly, we're praying for Brother Gerald Bailey, who's here today. He's going to have surgery in Lancaster tomorrow. We're praying for Brother Jim Solomon. We're praying for Wally Jr. We are praying for... Deacon Grant and Sister Karen Grant, her mother Loretta Grant, or Loretta Winfrey, uh, passed in Maryland. We're going to pray for her. We're praying for Tara Huge and family. Their grandmother passed this Tuesday. We're praying for Ira Spann, his father's funeral was this past Friday. We're praying for Allison Boone, whose sister Theodosia's funeral is tomorrow. We're praying for all those in bereavement. We're praying for all those who are sick and shut in. And we're thanking God for allowing us to see many who've come back, many who've come back after surgery and after being out sick. The Lord has certainly blessed us. Amen? Amen. At this time, the Reverend Council is going to lead us in prayer. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious, Holy Father, God, you are amazing. Oh, God, we serve an amazing God. Hallelujah, God, Lord. God, you held on to us, God. Oh, God, you give us hope, God, in the midst of difficult situations and circumstance, God. And God, you keep sowing seeds in us, Father God. So, Lord, we come this morning, God, giving you praise, God. Oh, God, we come, God, giving you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, God, for holding on to us, God, for opening the door for us right now, Father God. And you said that we can come to the throne of grace and mercy in a time of need and receive the help that we need, God. So, Lord, we come with no doubting, Father God. Help any unbelief that's in this room right now, God. We pray for access to the anointing right now because the anointing breaks the yoke right now God. So Lord we come in your presence right now. Thank you God for your patience God. Thank you for your preparation God. Thank you God that Lord you've got purpose in our lives Lord God. And God as we pray these prayers Lord God we know you're going to answer right now God. Oh God there's some sickness in the room God. But Lord, Lord we rebuke it right now God. Oh God you told us to invest in you Father God and Lord you will take the infection out right now. So God, right now, Lord, if there be any sickness, Lord God, we, we bind it up right now on this earth. Because God, you said we'll do the works you do, we'll do greater works right now. So in the name of Jesus, God, if there's any pain in this room right now, we rebuke it right now, God. If there's any hurt or injury in this room right now, we rebuke it right now by the blood of Jesus that's never lost his power, God. Lord, we thank you right now, God. Oh God, Lord, if somebody's in the hospital connected in this room right now, we want them to feel the anointing, the prayer right now, God. Transforming time, Lord God. Oh God, let them touch the hem of your garment right now and receive a healing right now, God. Oh God, whatever the doctor says, no, God, you still say yes. Yes to your healing. Oh God, whatever the x-ray may see, God, you can make it disappear right now in the name of Jesus right now. We pray for surgery right now, God. Oh God, somebody's facing surgery right now. Touch the hands of the surgeon, Father God. Touch the nurses right now. Touch the attendants right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody's on social media right now. may be bedridden right now, Father God. Oh God, touch that body. Let them know right now. This group, this remnant, God, is praying, Lord. You have, you have them in mind. And Lord, we've we got our minds stayed on you. And this is what you said. If we keep our minds stayed on you, 
you will give us perfect peace because we trust in you, God. So, Lord, in this circle, in this sanctuary, on social media, God, we trust in you right now. We treasure you right now, Father God. Oh, God, we're being taught by you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that, Lord, you are the ultimate resource. Oh, God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the sustainer of our souls, Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we are praying for the prodigal son. We are praying for a prodigal daughter, God. Oh, God, wherever they are, God, we know that by the anointing, God, you came to set the captives free. So, God, we're taking off these shackles. We're taking off these handcuffs, Lord God. Oh, God, they're being set free right now. Our sons and our daughters, Lord God. Our nieces and our nephews, Father God. Within our family, God, generational curses are being spoken right now in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. Some scales are being taken off the eyes right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Some hinders off that mind, Father God. Because you said, so is a man thinking in their heart, so is he. So God, change the mind right now. Change the message right now. In the name of Jesus. The devil has no authority here. Oh God, there's a deliverance taking place right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, there be any pain, God, God. Oh, God, there be in a relationship that's broken. I ask you to mend it right now. By Jesus' name, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We need you right now, God. Oh, God, we, we invest in you right now, God. We identify with you right now, God. Oh, God, yes, we claim the increase in you, God. Oh, God, we claim the intervals in you, God. But, Lord, not just in the monetary, Lord God, but in the spiritual, Lord God. In the spiritual, God, we claim the increase. We claim the investment, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 We pray for our senior citizens, God, wherever they are. Touch them right now, God. We pray right now, God. We pray for the marriages. We pray for the families. We bring it to you, Lord. We bring it to you, God. Oh, God, you can fix it right now, Lord God. Well, you can fix it right now, God. You can fix it right now, Jesus. So by faith, Lord, by faith, Every person that's under the sound of my voice, we will release it to you, God. We sow it to you, God. We water it for you, God. Knowing that, God, you will take the infection out and you will bring an increase. And God, as you fix it, God, and as you manifest it, God, we promise to do this in this prayer life today. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the honor. We'll give you all the praise and tell them how you brought us out how you brought us over, how you blessed us over and over again beyond measure. Father God, I thank you for this young man that came and gave his life to Christ. I saw the joy on his wife's face, Lord God. I give you praise, God, for another soul saved, God. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the increase in this harvest. And we just give you glory. We give you glory. We give it all to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all who believe, if you believe, so this must the seed today by saying amen to the Father, amen, amen to the Son, amen. and amen to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you for that prayer. Thank you for that prayer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Brother Michael Humphreys is, is the one who accepted the Lord Jesus and is joining today and his wife Sedell Humphrey is coming under restoration. Let's give it up and praise our God for what the Lord is doing in this place. Amen. Amen. We're going to now transition into our uh, communion service we ask that you would prepare your communion uh, package right now it's a little difficult to pull that first lever off that first uh, clear uh, top off first so we encourage you to please start working on that now uh, while we while we prepare 
uh, for this communion. Amen. <laughs> Ask our deacons to come. And while our deacons are coming, we certainly praise God. Saw Deacon Hughes back with us. Amen. Look at Deacon Hughes. Amen. God bless you. We love you, brother. Praying for his wife, Sister Hughes. All the, all the ministers, all the ministers, catch, catch the two ends. All the ministers come down, catch the two ends. The reading is coming from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. I'll read the first. You, the membership will read the second. And we'll read the third verse together. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. All together, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we come once again in the mighty name of thy son, Jesus. We come thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Thanking you, God, for sending your son. And thanking you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life. We thank you, dear God, that you will... Your son was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And so, God, we thank you right now for these elements on this table and in our hands. We ask now that you would change this element from its natural use to its spiritual use. Allow this bread to become your body and this fruit of the vine to become your blood. That as we partake of your body and your blood, we might show forth your death, your burial, and your resurrection until you come again. As we partake of your body, Lord, if there are any ailment or affliction in us, we ask that you would dry it up, clean it up, and cast it out. As we drink of your blood, Lord, if there be any sin or wicked way or evil in us, we ask that you forgive us, you would cleanse us, and that you would make us whole. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And we say amen, 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 amen. and amen. I'm going to ask us to hold our breads at this time. On the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and said, take, eat, this is my body. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the New Testament, a new covenant in my blood. 
Drink ye all of it as you do show forth his death, burial, and resurrection until he comes again. I knew it was the blood, I knew it was the blood, oh, I knew it was the blood for me, oh, one day when I was lost, and I knew it was the blood for oh. It was Jesus' blood. Oh, it was Jesus' blood. Oh, it was Jesus' blood for me. Oh, one day when I was born, Jesus, and I knew it. Hung his head and died. Hung his head Oh, he hung his head and for me. Oh, one day when I was Jesus, and I knew. One more time. One more time. Oh, he got up from the grave, got up from the grave, oh, he got up from the grave for me, oh, one day when Jesus and I Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we're going to let you go. We've got a few announcements and then uh, Deacon Duncan and Sister, Deacon Ben and Sister Stephanie Duncan will recognize our honored guests. But let me make these few announcements and we'll let you go. Community cleanup is this Saturday coming. This Saturday coming from 9 to 11.30. This will be led by the Brotherhood, Trustees, and the Youth Group. Amen? This is... Uh, this Saturday, and we encourage you to please help us out as we clean up our community. A Girl Scout Sunday is next Sunday morning, amen? amen. And it's also Youth Sunday. We're we changing it because of the Girl Scout Sunday. And our very own uh, Minister Melanie Williams is going to be preaching for us on next Sunday morning. <laughs> amen. Powerful, dynamic preacher. So come back and hear, hear her and support our Girl Scouts. Amen? Amen. Amen. Want to also uh, say to our college students, please ask all college students to please stand. Some of you are on spring break. So Brother Joseph Fleshman is here. Amen. Brother Damien, let's give it up for our college students. Thank you, one and all. Want to also thank our uh, Black History uh, Committee again for a wonderful Black History Month. Let's give it up for them and presenting. Amen. Deacon Duncan? Thomasina, okay. Miss Thomasina McKenzie is going to do it. But it is the, uh, the Rogers, Duncan, Mickle, Hawkins Family Ministry Unit. They're, uh, they're doing the hospitality uh, this, this month. And Sister Tara Hugey and Brother Jackson Brown, they're going to be giving out uh, the gifts to our honored guests. Thank you so much. Good morning, St. John. It is my pleasure to present to you our guest this morning, our special guest this morning. As I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing until you have been acknowledged by our pastor. We have Mr. Nathaniel Bowman, and he's a visitor for the first time. He is from New Market, Maryland, and his, he's a member of Strong Tower Church, and that is in Frederick, Maryland. 
and he's a guest of Ms. Sandra Norton. If there is anyone else who has not gotten a chance to complete a card, would you please stand? Pastor Graham, these are your special guests. Thank you so much, Ms. Thomas, Tom, Thomasina McKenzie. Thank you so much. We want to thank you all for coming and sharing with us today. You could have chosen uh, any other church, but you chose St. John, and we certainly appreciate that uh, you've taken the time to come out and share with us this morning. May God bless you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. If you want to know a little bit more about the St. John Baptist Church, our hospitality ministry will meet you at the door, and if you care to join at that time, we will also take you in at that time. But we love you, may God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Thank you again for coming. Amen? Amen. One, one final announcement for me, and this is congratulations. I want to ask them to put Sister Angeline Murray uh, Miller up. Uh, this is the the mother of Sister uh, Pamela Tidwell, and uh, she's, uh, we're saluting her, her legacy as a businesswoman, teacher, realtor, and the first known stylist to, in, uh, to introduce hair weaving in Colombia. We salute, amen. We salute her legacy as one who withstood the challenges of the Jim Crow laws that enforce segregation. She is recognized uh, as a history maker and a contributor to the black history of Columbia, South Carolina uh, over the six, six decades in Columbia. And she's now uh, recognized in uh, the Museum of Art down on Main Street. Let's give it up again for Sister Angeline. Amen. Of course, she grew up right here in St. John as a member. Amen. And her husband, Reverend Miller, and we praise God for all of them. Amen. Amen. While you remain standing, let's remain standing. Going to ask Brother Victor Rogers if he's here. If not, we're going to ask uh, Brother uh, Vanderhorst, if you will to give us our offertory prayer. Uh, given, give as given unto the Lord. We know give, you can't beat God given no matter how you try. So we thank you again. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we uh, come again before you now to tell you thank you. As we continue to uh, honor and worship you in the spirit of giving, we pray, Lord God, that you would uh, give us a heart and a mind to be able to be a blessing to the kingdom here on earth. Lord God, we ask now that you would bless each and every person that have the opportunity to give, and even bless those who don't, that they may have one the next time. Yes. We thank you for the reminder in this message, Lord God, on how to be good stewards. And you promised us in your word, Lord God, that if we be a cheerful giver, that you would give back to us. Yes, and so we thank you for the opportunity to give. Yes. We pray that you will continue to bless us as we continue to be a blessing here in this community, Lord God, here on earth. We thank you, and again, we count it done, and we claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Vanderhorst. Let's also give it up for Reverend Dylan, Minister Dylan, who did a marvelous job on last Wednesday night in our Lenten Wednesday night service. Amen. We have Lenten service every Wednesday night. This Wednesday night is going to be Ms. Uh, Minister Wilhelmina Wilson. She's going to Amen. preach. So please come out and... and Share with her and support her and support this ministry as we continue to grow in grace. Amen. Amen. We also have the Lenten devotions, which was shared with, with uh, each one of us on each day at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, if you please link in to the Zoom call, you will also get a wonderful treat, a wonderful blessing uh, with our Lenten devotional. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Health. Healing. Wholeness. Prosperity. Success. Long life. 
with satisfaction and salvation until we meet again. We all say amen. 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 Greet each other and of course share with our choir as they sing us out. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you.